What are we willing to endure in order to survive? The mountaineering stories are among the best to find out, because in the mountains, not everything is as it seems. Colby Combs was on vacation in the Alaska Range with his friends Walter and Kellogg. As the trio were on Mount Foraker, a massive avalanche suddenly rushed down from above and hit the guys. Colby, at the age of 25, was working as an instructor for the National Outdoor Leadership School. In summer of 1992, his adventurous nature led him and two friends, Walter and Kellogg, to attempt a climb to the top of Mount Foraker, a 5,000 meters tall mountain located in South Central Alaska. The initial climb went well, but at the point when they were nearing a large cliff bend, the weather started to change. Visibility was dropping fast and the wind was picking up at the unusually fast rate. Then Coombs felt the rope go slack from Walter, who was leading the climb. He quickly looked up to see a wave of snow smash him in the face. He passed out. When he awoke, he realized that six hours had passed and he was now about 800 feet further down the mountain than when the avalanche hit. He was also dangling from his safety rope and was in severe pain, being barely able to move one of his feet and to make matters worse. His backpack was gone. It turns out that the safety rope had hit a protruding piece of rock on the cliff face and caught the line there where all connected to, with Coombs on one hand and his friend Tom Walter providing the counterweight on the other end. As for Kellogg, it seems he became disconnected at some point during the fall and fell floating down the mountain. Coombs could see that Walter was dead as his face was so frozen that he couldn't make out his features. He managed to swing to a ledge and found Walter's sleeping bag, which he climbed inside and went to sleep. When he awoke, he rapidly to a lower and much bigger ledge where he found the body of Kellogg. He then spent the next two days trying to recover enough to make the climb down and also gathering up any equipment he could find scattered about in the snow. When he was finally ready to try climbing down, he spent the next six days slowly moving down the slope, stopping occasionally to drink water and to try and uh, deal with the pain in his foot. Coombs was suffering from a broken shoulder blade, a fractured ankle and a two fractured vertebrae in his neck. Somehow, he managed to keep going. Later, claiming he took inspiration from God and also forced himself into a survival at all costs, mental state. After reaching the base of the mountain, a search plane spotted him and dispatched a rescue party. Coombs was talking straight to hospital where he spent the next six months. He made a full recovery and didn't even lose any body parts to frostbite. He is now the owner of the adventure school he was working for at the time of the accident and continues to climb.